Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. March 3rd, 2021. S&P's off by 52 handles. The NASDAQ down by almost 400. Another 3% sell-off specific to tech. But I'm going to tell you right now, I know that's what most people want to focus on. But it's bond selling. And it's bond selling that should really strike fear into the hearts right now of the equity markets and equity traders. Let us actually start with a little discussion here, of course, in the bonds. So if you're familiar with bonds, well, great. If you're not, well, you better get familiar with bonds because they're down another point in 11 ticks. The notes also on uh, just monumental volume and size. Again, notes actually down almost uh, 20 ticks. So let's actually take a look at this. And uh, now we're actually going to open up a three-year chart inside of the bonds. You know, if you do open up a, a longer-term chart, kind of think to yourself it's not that bad i mean listen the bonds have come from the 130 handle yeah there's some sell side activity but you have to recognize that uh, the bond market that we're seeing kind of post covid okay is a completely different animal well, what do i mean by that i mean come on the fed is throwing everything including the kitchen sink for the most part, at the marketplace, now you know they want us to believe, you know, of course, that they've they've got more ammunition, which they absolutely unequivocally do. But when you start to look at this, all right, this huge spike to the upside, of course, is uh, is coming into uh, coming into the COVID crash inside of the equity markets, and uh, we've had again an extraordinary sell-off inside of the bond markets, which is of course driving interest rates. And now I'm actually going to cruise over to the TNX driving interest rates considerably higher. Of course, the Fed has you know, time and again come out and said, hey, don't worry about it, we're going to keep rates low. But that is actually Fed Fund Futures, which for those of you that are a little bit newer to this business may not know, those Fed Fund Futures are predominantly kind of the, uh, the shortest term, like overnight rates. <clears throat> so when you're looking at a TNX, though, you're looking at a 10-year. And this implies a little bit of an issue. Of course, the, uh, the yield curve, once again, getting a little bit steeper. Now, you need to take this and kind of break it down into what it's capable of doing okay, to the equity marketplace. First and foremost, when you start looking at the TNX, right, it touched once again today that very, very specific level and I just want to draw this up on the screen all right for those of you there seems to be an extreme amount of sensitivity specifically to 1.5 percent I mean literally came a you know uh, right up to it today and of course uh, pulled back a little bit but what the rise in interest rates is doing is well specifically you can see what it's doing to technology so a rising interest rate environment <clears throat> not necessarily favorable to the monsters of tech. So here are the monsters of tech. And when I talk about the monsters of tech, this is a conglomerate. It's Apple, it's Amazon, it's Facebook, it's it's Google, it's Microsoft. And I just wanted to show you on a year-to-date percentage basis, they're up 1.3%. Now, again, it's kind of a conglomerate. When you start looking though at Microsoft year-to-date basis, all right, it's up like four and a half percent in Apple. And I've been talking a lot about this. Uh, Apple's down almost 6% in a year-to-date basis. Take a quick glance at Facebook, down 5% in a year-to-date basis. Amazon down 5.7% year-to-date basis. Google, Google is actually still up some uh, some 16% year-to-date basis. And then, of course, we could bring up Tesla. Tesla is its own animal completely, but uh, down over 10% year-to-date basis. And I like to uh, just kind of enunciate that because, again, these are the titans that actually got the market to effectively where the market is. When you start looking at the spiders, like, what do you think brought us up here? However, this last leg to the upside inside of the spiders that was brought to you by predominantly the financials. And what I want to kind of break down for you here a little bit, so you have this, this wicked rise in interest rate. And uh, again, we look at the TNX you know, all day long, but I prefer to actually look at the bond market. So sell-side activity in the bonds obviously leads to a rise in the interest rate. You know, sooner or later, this is going to test the Fed's nerves, right? And we're actually going to find a level in here very, very soon where just that may occur. And it's something I've been talking about just incessantly on uh, some of these nightly videos, talked about it on the weekend uh, update, that somewhere, probably I would guess around like the 155 handle inside of the uh, the ZB is where, of course, you'll start to hear Fed speak and uh, the talk of, uh, they're not going to call it yield curve control, but they may actually have to get involved in like a twist program once again. The twist program is 
It's when the Fed actually came out years ago and they started actually buying Okay, things like bonds. So again, everybody assumes that the Fed is just, you know, they're just going to hold interest rates lower. But again, the, the interest rates that they're talking about are Fed fund futures, which is overnight, you know, the discount rate. Uh, in this particular case, this is the 30 year, you know, the ZN, this is the 10 year. And this, this selling in here, people, it's just getting downright ugly. I mean, it's, it's one of the worst sell offs that anybody's seen, you know, uh, anytime, okay, in recent history inside of a bond market. Again, when you start looking at it from a, a different perspective, and I brought this up a lot start looking at like TNX and you look at it, you know, again, this is like 1.5% interest rates. Who cares, man? The 10 years, like 1.5. I mean, you brought up like the full history of this thing. <laughs> I'm starting to see a trend. You know, this is, uh, this is when, you know, interest rates back here and back there being uh, 1997 was almost 7%. So the interest rate on the 10 year was like 7%. Now, what is it? You're like 1.5%. Who cares? Yeah. But look at this on a year to date basis on a year to date basis, the rate, like the 10 year is now up 60% year to date basis. You know, if you saw a stock, if you saw a stock that was up 60% on a year to date basis, okay, you'd be like, wow, man, that thing is rocking. I mean, just absolutely rocking. You would think like, oh, come on, man. That's like a GameStop. This is the 10 year rate. Okay. Do people not get how wild of a move this really is? Like, what do you think's going on here? I got to tell you right now. I think that the tech side of the, uh, the industry has held up incredibly well. But let's actually get down to it. When you look at today's sell side activity, as I said, the S&Ps were off about 50 handles and the NASDAQ was down almost 400, right? So uh, if you want to look at the QQQ, I mean, the QQQ lost almost 3% today and it looks uh, a little ominous at this point. Speaking of the QQQ, bring up like a uh, the expected move, okay? It's just slightly lower uh, then, of, of course, it was towards the beginning of the week. So uh, the beginning of the week is the black line right in the middle over here. Um, again, we're about halfway home to the lower edge of the expected move, neither here nor there. But the point that I really want to make with this and that's that's being missed is we still have an incredibly wild bifurcation going on in terms of the advanced decline line. I don't look at this as a positive at all. I look at this as an absolutely unequivocal, hideous mess. Okay. This is the S and P 100, the advanced decline line. Just call it what it is. It's pretty much a 50, 50 mess. You got to realize that market again, the markets, they don't capitulate like this. And I've been talking also about this a lot. I mean, a day where the S and P's are off 50. Okay. That was the S and P's. They were down 50. I mean, go look at the spiders, go look at the SPX. They're all down like five bucks, 50 bucks over here. So the S and P's are down some 50 handles and you're on a 50, 50 advanced decline line. Are you kidding me? You got to think about the fact that if we correlated, those S&Ps would have been down easily 100, 130. And that's, that's why I'm telling you right now, there's a whole lot of risk to the downside. So what actually held the market up today? Ah, financials. But take a look at the financials in terms of auto expected moves. The financials smashed, smashed the edge of the expected move this morning and reverted back. This, this actually got a mm, little bit ugly towards the end of the trading session, the sell side activity started pouring over into the financials. Now, remember I'm saying this, if the financials go, we're all going, okay? We're all going means the S&Ps are going to sell off, they're going to sell off hard. I'll reiterate something I said just about uh, two minutes ago. That last leg to the upside inside of the S&Ps, yeah, that was brought to you by the financials because the financials, when you look at them on a year-to-date basis, they're still up 15% on a year-to-date basis. You know, if you start looking at the uh, the spiders, spiders are basically what? Up 3% year-to-date basis, okay? That's, hey, it's phenomenal given the fact that tech is actually down, right? I mean, tech for the most part is actually down on the year. The spiders are actually up. How is it possible? It's possible by financials. I'll tell you another sector, the energy sector. The energy sector, though, is going to do whatever the financials do, okay? They're going to trade pretty much in for a one-for-one one and take a look. All right, in the energy sector, they faded too at the exact same time as the financials today. So again, get ready for some volatility. So the advanced decline line, again, I want to reiterate this, downright scary. Correlation grips hold to the downside. Those S&Ps are going to crack and it is going to be, again, hideous. So with that, remainder of this trading week, okay, a few things that you want to watch for in the remainder of the trading week. Obviously, number one, any continued sell side activity inside of the bonds is is going to really spark, all right, that fear trade. And and that's the one where you get under your desk, you start rocking back and forth. And you know, everybody right now is looking for a reason. This is the jobs report, it's this, is that listen, the bottom line, it doesn't matter. 
there's sell side activity in the bonds and I actually laid out the entire plan for the bonds if the bonds continue to see sell side activity it is going to snap the back of the financials that's right selling in the bonds at some point is actually going to snap the back of the financials they're going to snap the financials obviously tech is already snapping okay and the S&Ps they're going to drop like a rock and you've got to be careful of that now the other side of that coin, if we actually rally back up, we rally back up on the bonds, what's it going to do? It's still going to snap the back of the financials. The financials, the only way the financials can actually sustain where they're currently at, right? And the XLF's at 33 half. Only way they're going to sustain that is if these bonds just kind of skirt through the middle, all right? Otherwise, the financials, there's kind of a no way out trading there. And I like it. And I've actually stepped in and shorted more in terms of financials, specifically Wells Fargo. All right, and the, uh, and the XLF, I've stepped into shorts. Okay, the remainder of this week, let's go to the SPX. The remainder of this week, this is where you better be vigilant. You got to be vigilant on this particular front because the SPX, all right, we have a really expansive expected move. So the expected move this week, all right, and again, this is where the week started, okay? The upper edge of the expected move, the lower edge of the expected move. It's $124, $124 higher or $124 lower. The point that I want to make, what did we do so far this week? We bid, we sold off, we laughed, we cried. We are massively unchanged though in the week. I mean, we're literally like spot on people where we pretty much started the week. So now we got issues. We got issues because we haven't actually tagged the upper edge of the expected move. We haven't tagged the lower edge of the expected move. And I'm going to tell you right now, you better get familiar with this. Because as I said, if the financials start to come off, you think this looks like a far way away? Okay. Again, that is the, what, 3687 handle. 3687 specific to the SPX. You're like, whoa, that's, that's quite the little move over there. It's nothing. It's nothing of the kind of volatility. You're already at 26 fix. We should be rocking, right? You take a look at the SPX once again, and yeah, sure, you're looking over here at the expected move, but I want you to actually go to the SPX. Okay, and I want you to go to the trade tab on any any major trading application, whether it's Tastyworks, whether it's Thinkorswim here, and I want you to look out, and I do. I, I actually want you to look right there. That's the uh, between now and of course the Friday expiration, March fifth Friday expiration. Yeah, we're still sitting at about a seventy dollar uh, expectation of movement over here. Okay, I think we can even extend further than that. So people, get ready to rumble. There's gonna be some decent size volatility. Now, last but definitely not least, okay. If you're considering selling options premium, just hold off. Again, we've been at this pivotal moment and we're right back exactly where I said, like this is going to be a pivotal moment for the marketplace. And I was talking about that on the weekend. I mean, ironically, we're right there. We're on the edge, people. I mean, if you take a look at this and you're like, okay, there, there, there could be some support down here at the you know, 380 level or 3800 level inside of the S&Ps and maybe we break through it, maybe we don't. Okay, there's no reason to step out. Okay, and take inordinate amounts of risk at this particular level. If you're actually going to look for selling premium, let them break. Let them, let them rock to the downside. Let volatility expand a little bit, okay, and we'll get even a better opportunity. But at this point in time, sit back. You're going to get caught in the middle of a firefight right now in this marketplace in the days to come. Let the bonds continue to sell off. Again, I totally believe that the bond market itself is trying to test Let's actually find out where Jerome Powell will actually step in. And uh, if it does continue to sell off, again, it's going to snap the back of these S&Ps along with the financials. And you're going to find out real quick, okay, what this marketplace is capable of. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here at Theotrade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.